Welcome, welcome, Dr. Stephen Hobbs here from the Wealth Movement. And this is number three of three with Daniel Aaron. This is part of the Wealther series. Um, Daniel and I have had a conversation over the last little bit uh, between the second one and today's. And we were looking at what would be a couple of other key concepts we would like to explore in our, in our conversation. And one of the words that popped up for me that we didn't get a chance to talk to in number two was the word authenticity. And I know that Daniel has his own way of looking at authenticity, and I'm gonna get him to unpack it, and then I'll have a bit of a conversation with him as, as we move forward. So I, guess, so I guess, Daniel, that's my way of segueing into <laughs> getting you involved in the call. So authenticity, where are we gonna go with that? How are we gonna unpack that? Well, it's, uh... It's a great question, and you know, I think for me it ties back into our first conversation in this series when we were talking about um, congruency, and you know, in some ways, I, I think a lot of what we're talking about here and, and the people that are interested in what we're sharing is in the business realm and and how to you know make an impact in the world and share and. To me, authenticity is probably the most I don't know, important part um, for any of us in terms of uh, as a teacher, as an entrepreneur, as a coach, as a mentor, um, that if we, the more we are able to be who we really are in, in all different aspects of our lives and convey that in what we do, um, I think the more effective we are is one and the more relaxed and uh, at peace we are. And I remember when years ago I was teaching yoga classes and uh, you know, of course, if, if, if you're teaching a class for say 90 minutes straight, um, you know, basically talking the whole time, uh, well, at least for me anyway, um, guaranteed that I would make a mistake in that process, you know, say left instead of right or hum or get confused or space out. And when I first started doing it, I was like, got really mad at myself for that. And, um, and then as I matured into it, I realized, you know what, actually me making mistakes and being at peace about it was one of the best things that I could offer other people. Because ultimately, that teaches us all that, hey, it's okay. I'm okay, no matter what. I'm, it's okay to just be myself. So that's a you know, I guess a little bit of what it means for me. How does it, um, how does it land for you? Or what is, what is, what do you feel about that word? Well, authenticity has the beginning of like author to it. And for me is that you're the author of your story, uh, the direction you're going to go in and the more authentic you are to that story, that direction, the better it's going to be in terms of your interactions with others and living with your, your yourself. Right. To be able to deal with the um, elements of even solitude and boredom, right, is to be able to be authentic in, in that um, that part. But there was a there was a word that you used, uh, or maybe a phrase. It's almost if I'm getting it is like relax into your authenticity. There's there must be a special point there because we could probably talk about breathe into your authenticity when you're going to share who you are. Do you have something there that you would want to offer? Well, you know, it's interesting, as you said, um, authentic, having a connection uh, with uh, author. Uh, what came to me is, yeah, and then, then there's the connection also with authority. And, you know, when we have a, an authenticity about ourselves, what, whatever we're doing, whether it's working with employees or teaching or selling there's um again i think the more we are authentic the more we're able to relax into ourself and say it's, it's easier just to be myself because it's so easy also to follow that programming that we've had that well i got i gotta be somebody i gotta you know i, I gotta put on this hat or i i gotta you know puff myself up in some way and um to just be ourself, in fact, gives us a lot more authority. And, and people, my experience is that students and employees and, you know, uh, people that we're 
coaching, they can always feel it if we are not authentic, if we're trying to be more than we are or, you know, have more answers than we do. Um, there's something just so relaxing and peaceful about saying, I don't know, you know, I'm not sure, or, you know, I'll look into that or, you know, here's my experience. I'm, I'm not the um, authority on it, but, you know, this is what I have to share that, in fact, has more authority. Yeah, it's sort of authority, authentic, author, and being able to share is that you're going to learn along the way. There's a lot of authenticity that goes with that because you don't always have the answers. And that's that give and take, that learning, educating. I, I sort of summarize it as when you listen, you learn. When you share, you educate. And it's a give and take. And I think when you're authentic is when you're in that uh, dance, <laughs> for lack of a better, you're, you're in your authentic dance. And, and that becomes um, really important, which, which probably means that there's going to be something about power right? Something about power is going to pop into this. And for me, and it's just coming to the foreground because this notion of power is something uh, when you're authentic, you're standing in your power, your authorship, you, you have power that maybe you're, you're sharing through your authoring. Um, where might we go with, uh, with power at this point in time and to make a connection? Mm, yeah, that's a great one. The first thing that comes to mind for me is going back now, like 25 years ago, I remember reading the book, um, Dr. David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. Yes. And, um, you know, and that was, to me, kind of a, a revolutionary idea there. Uh, and it, again, especially so such an apt learning, given the time that we're living in now and the political situation wherein there's a tendency to sort of force and like we were talking about in the last conversation the 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 patriarch the old patriarchal perspective of i'm going to pu push this forward as opposed to um, a greater power that comes from questioning from listening from authenticity um that you know it's like um i, I love the analogy of You've got a incredible uh, ship with the best captain in the world, and you've got the ocean. Who's more powerful? Yeah. Right? You know? And in some ways, this represents the masculine, and this represents the feminine. And as a culture, we've kind of got a little confused about that, and we, we've tended to think that the masculine is um, more powerful. And yeah, it's just the opposite. Uh, how about for you, where does... Uh, where does power fit how does power fit into it for you well i i remember years ago it was um maybe not use the word enable use empower there was that sort of writing piece and i always remembered empower came out of that um, um out of the legal world right uh, the uh, power of attorney to empower someone to be your um advocate for whatever is going on and i went oh, okay uh, and enable is not a bad either is, you know, to be able to do something. But then I went back and said, okay, well, what is power about? And I, I think is that we generate that. That's something that we do as human beings. We generate this, this power. And when you uh, tend to take that and push it somewhere or charge something up, then it becomes more like a force, which is back to Hawkins' work, right? power and force if we're authentic we sit in our in our uh, power we don't have to put force we don't have to push it out in different directions and with intensity it's just there and we can tap into it that's a way that i look at that and when you're given the opportunity to help others to guide others then it's sort of a little bit like the power of attorney right you're you're going to get them to take care of themselves and get them working on what it is that they need to work with. And that's why I'm sort of looking at power and weaving it into my life. Right. Is that, how's it sit for you? Yeah, that's cool. It's, um, you know, you can teach an entrepreneur to 
uh, you can give an entrepreneur a fish or you can, you know, teach them how to fish sort of thing. And um, there's ultimately a lot more satisfaction, I think, in enabling or empowering people. Uh, I always think in some way our job as coaches, mentors, and educators is to put ourselves out of business when it comes to the people we're serving. Like the best thing possible is that they don't need us anymore. Not that they ever really need us, but that they're, you know, they, they've got it and they're, you know, going just like with our children. It can, you know, same kind of thing. Like we want to get it so they don't need to be with us. And then, it, you know, it's great if we are, when we are together. Yeah. And I, and I like that fish storyline that you said, you know, here's a fish to eat, learn how to fish. We can go so far as now you're going to market your fish. You got to deliver the fish. You got to figure out what people want so you can figure out what fish you're going to go catch. You know, that's the story of the entrepreneur. Okay. And if we're able to do that and help others out with that, then that's a really super way in which for it to, um, to unfold. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of jogging, something's come in around this power piece and um, it's around freedom. And I was talking to someone else the other day about freedom and success and what is freedom and um, what is it that we can do to get to a place of, of freedom. So I'm thinking if we take, if you're gonna be authentic and share the power that you're generating, there's freedom there for you but you've also got to be very aware of what is going to happen for freedom of the other person. So can we just tackle a little bit around this notion of freedom for self? Where would you go with that storyline? Well, I remember many years ago, I came across a quotation and actually before I even say the quotation, um, I, in my own life, when I had, you know, this sort of awakening experience that changed the direction of my life, and I got very devoted to spiritual practices and certain ways of eating, uh, what people might call disciplines, which I think of more just as discernment, going back to an earlier conversation, um, people would look at me and say, wow, you know, that guy's so disciplined. And, um, and I came across this um, quotation that said, something like um, as as far as your discipline goes so goes your freedom and and i remember re you know i had to read it like four times and say <laughs> what does that mean um because i normally up till that point i would have thought of discipline and freedom as being like opposite ends of the spectrum um you know if i'm disciplined uh it means i'm structured or bound in some way and freedom is just this openness. And what came to me as I sat with that for a while is that, in fact, there, if we don't have structures for ourselves, if we don't have some sense of discipline, then we don't really have any freedom because we're just blown around on the sea of life. We don't have a rudder. We don't have a sail. Um, the currents and the wind just take us wherever they want to go. So for us to you know, be the authority of our life to write the story we want, then, you know, there's incredible freedom in having, making that kind of those discerning choices and having discipline. For, for you, where, you know, how does freedom fit into the conversation? Well, one of the th things I go back to is, something that I read back in the eighties and like you, you pull quotes and, and that piece. And I remember reading a book called the women's ways of knowing. And I was quite taken with it because it was a really great ex explanation about what I'll call vamp. Okay. And then I'm going to add ire to make vampire here. Okay. And vamp stood for voice, authority, mastery, and position. And if you are in a place of authenticity and you're generating your power, then you can vamp it up, right? Because you've got those there. If you misalign any of those, you start to add the ire. Oh my gosh, I'm, I've got myself into a, a bit of a pickle here. 
and you sort of can become a vampire, right? And you're sort of going, oh, this is not working for me. And then you might strike out, you know, like the vampire story. Okay, I'm, I'm, I may be pulling this one <laughs> and having some fun with it, but it was a great way for me to remember is that if I'm authentic and I have my power and I'm really truly in my place of freedom, then I understand my voice, my authority, my mastery, and my position. And as entrepreneurs, and I call inspired practitioners, if you get that, then the sense of freedom just washes over you and you don't have to go, my goodness, you know, what am I, what am I gonna fight <laughs> kind of thing, right? I know I'm exaggerating it, Daniel, but I'm, I'm just having a little bit of fun here too. So any thoughts about the vamping it up? Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think it ties in perfectly with, you know, what we're talking about when, um, you know, when, when we're authentic, it's like we're, com we're coming from our center and who we really are on the inside comes out as opposed to getting kind of sideways or distorted through what we think we should be or what we think somebody else would do or what somebody else wants. And so if, if we have that the, the, the freedom to be ourself and it comes through, then yeah, we can vamp it up. Why not? Because then it's, it's easy, it's natural. And, you know, it's like anything, if it's, if the signal isn't pure and you turn it up, it gets, you know, it gets painful or distorted. If the signal's pure and you vamp it up, turn it up, then, you know, it's just more is better in some way like that. Yeah, it's sort of like voice amp, right? Like the amplifier of your voice when you're singing, when you're speaking from the stage, right? There's that, there's that kind of connection, right, that, that's going on. And the other day, you sparked me. Uh, I was thinking about something because of our conversation. You sparked me about this role of nature and the importance of nature when it comes to being authentic and sharing your power. Because I, I, I went back to think about uh, uh, something I call eco-architecture and these elements, these seven elements from nature. And I went, nature is about as authentic as you can get it, because nature's nature, right? A dolphin's a dolphin, a worm's a worm, and humans are not human in some ways, <laughs> right? And we play with this concept of power, whereas nature is just part of the story, right? That you, you get your storms, you get your really warm days, your cold days, right? It's being very authentic to what it is that's, that's being presented. And I think nature is a really great way of looking at what we're talking about. I, you know, even if we go back to the uh, to the other videos and we talk about discernment and we we talk about um, all the other topics that sort of wove themselves into where we're going and and I know you've got a perspective on nature and how it links in and um, because again you've had the pleasure of seeing different kinds of nature situations uh, it's like it's like I have so I always appreciate that so do you want to share a couple of points around nature as it links to what we're talking about right now from your perspective? Yeah, I, I love I love what you said the um, the way what's in nature and and the animals in nature are just fully themselves and we have a lot of um, beautiful opportunity and characteristics to us as humans um, and um, you know one of the potential pitfalls of our humanity is that um, you know, we can we can have this lack of authenticity, or you know, uh, you know, be self conscious about ourselves, and you know, and, and and lose our power by inverting in some way. Um, you know, and, and a lot of my my work and entrepreneurship is informed by my own spiritual study and practice. And one of the interesting things about spiritual practice and the disciplines is, you know. Just inherently there is something about it that is doing like I'm trying to do this I'm trying to accomplish this in 
in the in the yogic structure it's called sadhana and the sadaka is the one who does sadhana and what it stands what it means is to strive and the the great irony of it is also embedded within the teachings is that you know there's nothing to create or become or do really all we're doing is taking the layers away that have obstructed our natural sense who we are already who we are naturally um, you know and and i was you know I, I appreciate how much focus you have on nature and trees and forest and well for me also as a kid i i, I grew up with no modeling for appreciation of nature in terms of the natural environment and I, I lived in cities and I lived in suburbs and it wasn't until uh, I be a, a young adult that I realized wow there's this whole natural world and I find now that it's probably my best my best therapy my best practice my best way of coming back to my own nature is just to get away from well, I don't know if I like it saying it that way, get away from, to um, have a sojourn away from, I suppose, um, the, the, the man-made stuff and the constructs that are sort of on top of nature. You know, when I get out and there's that space and emptiness, then it's like the parts of me that aren't uh, true or serving me just kind of melt away. And I feel like I come back to my own nature. Um, and then, you know, it, last thing I'll say on it for now I want to hear from you is the um it's so easy in the in the business world to be focused on building achieving creating you know in this you know uh it's easy to sort of lose our nature I guess that's why for me it's such an important concept yeah it's like using that language to build or grow just even the shifting of those words and uh, building the foundation, uh, growing from the seedbed, and being able to see what what's going up, right? It, there's something to be said for for that way of looking at it. the The other part for me is, from a business and life point of view, is how to become a natural educator. I, I mentioned earlier is you know when you listen you learn when you share you educate. And this being authentic, this power element of what we're talking about, this, this freedom, this nature, is to just understand our naturalness, right? Because naturally, we're educators. We have this natural education because if we love what we learn and we want to share it and be an entrepreneur around it, build a business and life around that, there is a connection. But there's also the weaving in the, the nature-based practices and concepts. Because I'm, I'm just gonna say for people, and I'm sure you're, uh, if they're looking at you going, oh, hang on, you got a really neat backdrop. You've got a terrace and you got plants that are sort of growing. You can see the top of the trees. And I'm sitting here with something popping into my head, which is a light, and I've got doors here and doors here. Folks, I know where I would rather be sitting <laughs> and having this conversation, right, as an entrepreneur and, and for my life is being where, being where you are, right? And that's where I'm going to be looking. I've got a home coming up that is a house, and it's surrounded by trees and nature, and I'm going to spend a couple of months there. I'm looking forward to this, right? So this nature plays itself out as a really authentic place to be in. And you chose to go outside. Why did you choose to go outside to do the, the call? Well, I, you know, I, when I can be outside, I, I prefer it, you know, and um, in, in part because I think I feel more at ease and especially if i'm gonna have a conversation with someone as wise as you or be sharing with you know coach you know a client or teaching if i can be in a natural environment i feel better and and you know the more i 
feel relaxed and true to myself when I'm sharing, the you know the more effective it is, the more useful it is for for everyone. And you know, it's an interesting one because I've been in a, a long transition. I've lived in Bali for many years, and a little over a year ago, I came back to the states and kind of saying like, okay, if I'm in the states, where do I live? And uh, this winter, I spent six months in LA, and I hadn't lived in a city in so long i mean like 30 years and and part of why i went there in some ways like okay well you know it's time for me to um get more connected with people again and you know you know build up my business back here in the us and and yes you know a city's a good place for that um and i'm glad i was there and i'm glad to be here <laughs> put it that way yes yeah. well what you're bringing up for me is i i sort of, I go do a little daydream because I, I'm a visual, so all of a sudden I see things, right? And, and I was just thinking, uh, I'm here in Canada, December, January, minus 20, minus 30 Celsius. That's pretty cold. I think I'll probably stick with the doors and the light in the top of my head <laughs> rather than sitting out on, the, on a veranda at that point in time. Again, it's that realization, but I could sit outside, so I have the freedom to go sit outside, right? I have the freedom to take and go for walks with people, right? Even when I'm doing my entrepreneurial coaching, you can still go for a walk. You can still go for a hot chocolate. You can still do all these kind of things, right? I think it comes down to how much do you love what you're doing and where you are? And I'm being a little more... <laughs> love where you are and what you're doing is so so important to this unfolding that i think we're hinting at through this um, wealth or series conversation i know i have a, a particular look at the word um, love uh, but i'm just going to turn it back to you where would you go around a conversation of love at this point in time hmm. I, I remember when when I was um, studying writing, uh, going, again, going back about 30 years, and I was quite obsessed with studying writing, one of my teachers said, as a writer, very seldom do you use the word love. It's overused, right? You have to show it. You have to um, bring the action to it. And then some years later, when I was uh, – developing business and building a center and uh, I came across you know, and I was feeling quite stressed out by the amount of uh, work and the demand on me and then I came across the quotation from Mother Teresa that work is love made visible and and it really struck me like wow you know and, and it it just helped shift things for me and I realized like yeah, I'm, I am doing a lot of work and it is a lot of effort and there is a lot of demand. And this is a way for me to love, to love the world, my customers, the employees. And you know, making that shift was so powerful to say, I get to do this. This is a, a, a labor of love. And you know, I don't know, I guess my encouragement for everyone is, whatever our work is, whatever we're doing, we have to love it. You know, maybe not every task, but if, if overall love what we are doing because we're doing it a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I always associate love with evolve. And because we're in this constant um, evolution to, to evolve and to grow, and in some cases, build things, to grow things, to you know, generate this power to, to move us forward. I always like the connection to evolve. And if I may here, if you take the first four letters of evolve and flip them around, it's the word love. If you take the middle two letters and flip those around and add the last two, it's the word love. So evolve is full of love just depends which perspective you come at it from. But if you are in this place of saying, I'm going to evolve, I'm going to look for that my nature, my human nature, 
right, and generate the power and be authentic, that is a great way in which to be for this world, to be able to serve the business that you have, the life you want to, you want to live. Any thoughts about from that perspective? You know, I love to play with words. So <laughs> I, yes, I, just, I, I just use that one. <laughs> I, I, once again, I bow to that wise word uh, play Smith that you are. Um, and, and I think that's it's, it's so awesome. Uh, evolve and love and the way they are connected. And it's like, well, the first thing that comes to me is in, in our, just start with in our personal relationships, in our, in our family or our love, you know, our most intimate relationships, love is something that has to evolve. It has to grow. Um, Cause you know, whatever I did yesterday or said yesterday, well, that, that's past. And for me in relationships, I need to be present to what the needs are, what the opportunities are, what the challenges are. And it just, it just keeps going and growing. And same is true in business. And I think a lot of businesses end up failing in some way because they achieve some level of success or recognition and then hold on to it. Um, and, you know, they loved perhaps the process to get there and that's why they had some success. And yet, if it doesn't evolve, it dies. You know, like the, the commandment in nature is either grow or die. And so we have to keep that evolution happening and uh, keep pouring love into what we're doing and saying, what now? How can I love now? How can I love better now? What's the evolution of this situation? And I think that that weaves it very nicely as we're sort of heading out on this call. If, if you were to if you were to share with us right now something to do with love and how it's going, something you can take action around, what would you share with our, the listeners who are listening into this conversation right now? Hmm. Well, in, in relationships and in business, it's, easy to follow the the mainstream perspective that a lot of us have grown up with which is what can i get um you know um how can i sell this thing so i get this customer how can i um, uh, get from my partner them to uh, you know scratch my back or make dinner or take the trash out and, you know, we have the possibility to sort of raise our standards and flip the perspective on it and say, what, what's something I can do right now and today that is just giving love, giving value with no expectation of return. And I, I, it's so cool that um, the development of positive psychology, I'm a big fan and student of it. Uh, one of the one of the best tips for increasing our own happiness and our own success in life is really that sort of altruistic giving service without expectation the irony of course being that one it feels really good and two laws of the universe require that as we give out something will be coming back to us. It just has to happen that way. You just, you just spark something. It's like give to get or get to give. Hmm. And I think nature, right? Nature is about give to get. What we as humans did was we want to get to give and, and that's a get to maybe give. And I went, wow, hang on a minute. So to love is to give, to get, to give, to get, to give, to get. <laughs> okay. And it's the starting off point that's important. The, the framing it up. Uh, I'll go back to one of the other words in one of the other presentations to restory. 
and the resilience piece. Right? So you, you spark that uh, remembrance. That was something we talked about in the first video is to remember in the second video a little bit. So I think that that's, I think therein is a place to probably say, okay, this is a great place to finish off this conversation and this being the third of the third, knowing that there's probably gonna be, no, no, not probably, there is going to be some follow-up conversations and some of them are gonna be live. And if you want to um, learn more about them, there's information around the video where you can sign up to, and we'll share when we're going to evolve our conversation, to bring some power to our conversation, to get them to be authentic conversations so that we can share insights and ideas uh, for your business and uh, in your life. And I think with that, Daniel, I'm gonna say thank you for being on the three calls. And I look forward to continuing the conversation. So is there any couple of words you wanna share with everyone as we close off? And I'll give you um, your closing time. Yeah, thanks. Well, going back to, um your uh, invitation to me to offer something to our guests here um, in terms of action and um, just to, to make it more clear I say I invite you to you know wherever you are whatever you're doing to make it happen today that you give something whether it's you know you pay for somebody else's meal or you uh, you know fold somebody else's laundry or you pay their toll or you just walk up to somebody you don't know and say something authentically that you appreciate about them um, without any expectation and see how you feel. You know, what happens, how they take it, and that's one thing, and that's usually pretty cool. And just notice how you feel from that. Um, and, you know, on that level, I'll also say thank you to you, Stephen. I so appreciate your wisdom and generosity and, and you know that I get to have this conversation and spark ideas and make new connections and keep growing and learning um, it's really a blessing so thank you for thank you for having me here oh you're, you're more than welcome and and folks with that um, if this is the first video you see there was two before it if you're in the second one there's bookends if you're in the first one you got two coming so with that Daniel Thanks very much and have a wealthy, wealthy day.